Okay, so this is part two of lecture seven, continuing to talk about Lewis structures, specifically drawing Lewis structures of multiple bonds, double bonds, triple bonds, and I am going to work out a number of Lewis structure examples. Uh, some of them will be from your lab five exercise, so you can refer to this or use it as a guideline. All right, so to the slides. This slideshow is in Canvas, module six, since I have not yet streamlined the your welcome page. Um, lecture, Lewis and Vesper structure. So doing the rules, let's go back to the rules for developing a Lewis structure. And remember there are two different ways. One is simply a little extra step of the other. I use the Mortimer method, so I will be using that, but you, you don't have to, you do what works for you. Both, me both methods, you count up the valence electrons. So go to the periodic table, go to the group number that tells you the valence electrons, just the outer ones that are available for chemical reactions, interacting with other atoms. Choose your central atom. It's going to be the least electronegative. If you have more than one, place them next to each other. Um, remember, electronegativity increases as you go to the right of the periodic table. So the further left is your central atom. Hydrogen is never a central atom. And in this class, we're not going to put chlorine in the center either. And fluorine is never in the center. Chlorine can be in the center, but not, not for this class next semester. Um, you place your atoms around the central atom, make your connections, and place your valence electrons. And then the Mortimer method has this extra step of the ideal electron. You count the valence electrons you actually have. Now you calculate if every electron, and I described it, they're going to a party, they're going to the country house for the weekend, and each atom carries a suitcase with a full shell, eight electrons. Except for hydrogen, hydrogen has a little mini carry case. It only has two electrons. This represents the full shell state for that atom. Remember, that's a goal of an atom is to get that full state. So the ideal is what if every atom has a full shell? So each atom gets multiplied times eight. The hydrogen gets multiplied times two because it's got a little case. You subtract how many valence you actually have, the first number you calculated, from the ideal. What you're left with is how many electrons have to be shared to get that full octet for everybody. Well, if you're going to share electrons, how many electrons are in each bond? Two. So you divide your shared number by two. That tells you how many bonds you have. I like this way. You can use it or not use it, but I like, especially with um, multiple bonds, molecules, I like knowing right off the bat how many bonds I have. Okay, so let's go down here to multiple bonds. Most of what we've seen so far is sharing one pair of electrons between atoms, but you can have more than one pair shared. Now you'll learn in Chem 1 the actual physical structure of the sharing. They're not, you don't have four where you used to have two. They are spaced separately apart, but just you know, for now, know that you can have multiple bonds. You can have sharing of two, four, or six electrons between two atoms, and we draw them as the line. You can do the dots as well, but you can see that it starts to get kind of cumbersome. If you, if you have a triple bond, because we call that a double bond and a triple bond, six dots versus three lines. So we generally use the lines. Each line is two electrons being shared between the two atoms. So this is four total being shared. This is six. But again, don't, they're not all swarmed together at once. They all, each sharing pair has its own space that it's traveling in. All right, so let's find an example. So I'm going to work, let's see, I think the rest from here is, I'm just gonna work. Yeah, I'm, so I'm going to work on the whiteboard. 
this example and then a number of other ones. When I do the C2H4, which is the first example I'm going to work, so that's here, I'm going to do it the Mortimer method and that is spelled out here. So the steps you're going to see me do, these are the actual steps spelled out, okay? So it's all spelled out right there. And then the other slides represent the other way of doing it, which is placing all of your electrons either in bonds. And then when you made all your bonds, you, you put your leftover valence electrons over one of the atoms. You realize you have not filled the octet rule. See that carbon only has six, not eight. And so you, you redistribute the electrons so that every atom has an octet or two in the case of hydrogen. All right, I, that just doesn't work well for me, so I use this method. Okay, so let's go to the whiteboard and work out that one and then a number of others that I'm going to pull from your lab five exercise. Oops, that's not what I want. So, C2H4. First thing you do, how many valence electrons do you actually have? Well, carbon has four. Remember, you look on your periodic table. Here's carbon, group 4A. In the other uh, numbering system, it's 14. Either way, it's four. So that tells you this has four valence electrons. But I have two carbon atoms, don't I? So I have a total of eight from carbon. Hydrogen has one, but I have four hydrogens. So I have 12 valence electrons. Okay, that's what I actually have. What's my ideal? Everybody came to the party, but they brought all of their own electrons with them. Well, a full set for carbon and every element except for hydrogen and helium is eight. So ideally carbon, each carbon atom would have its own eight electrons. And so ideally there would be 16 electrons at the party. And ideally that's hydrogen would bring its little carry package of two. And so that's eight. So ideally we would have 24 valence electrons for everybody to have an octet, but we don't have 24, we have 12. So we have to have some sharing go on. And of course you have covalent bonds. And so that's what it is. How many electrons have to be shared? Well, you have to subtract what you have from your ideal. So here's what you actually have. Subtract it from the ideal and you're going to end up with how many have to be shared. In order for everybody to have an octet, you have to share 12 electrons. Okay, we're talking about bonds here. We're talking about molecules. Well, every bond has two electrons. So I want to know how many bonds. I divide my shared by two, and that gives me six bonds. Now, this is, looks tedious at first. It's really fast if you do it regularly, and it, it fits with you. So I have six bonds in my molecule. So I have, I'm going to have to, unfortunately, let's see. I guess I can try to come over here. So I have six bonds, all right? You can tell I like colors. So the first thing I do is I put my carbon, I have two carbons, they're both going to be center atoms. So you put them next to each other. My hydrogens are going to go attached to the carbons. So I have a hydrogen here and a hydrogen here, distribute them evenly. One, two, three, four, five bonds. There's my second bond. Double check. Does everything satisfy the octet rule? Hydrogen, you don't have to worry about. But as long as it's bonded, that satisfies it. This carbon has two, four, six, eight electrons. Yes. This carbon has two, four, six, eight. Yes. Okay. Is everything accounted for? Two carbons, four hydrogens. Yes. Most importantly, have I accounted for all of my valence electrons? 
two electrons per bond. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, yes. There we go. There's my molecule. And again, that's worked out on the slides, both, both ways. Okay, so not all of these examples are going to have double bonds. Just letting you know, but um, I like them. So let's look at phosphorus tribromide. How many valence electrons do we have? Well, phosphorus is here, so it has five. And bromine, of course, is over here. It has seven. So that's 21. I have 26 electrons. That's a lot of electrons. What's going to be my center atom? The phosphorus is further left than the bromine. So phosphorus is my less electronegative. So put my phosphorus in the middle, put my bromines around. Lewis structures do not tell you shape, so it doesn't matter how you put them, as long as they're placed correctly around. Okay. I didn't do more to more because I actually know the um, number of bonds and everything like this. But if I did, okay, let's work through the Mortimer. That's how many I actually have, 26 valence electrons. What would be me, my ideal? My ideal I have one, two, three, four. I have four regular atoms. Every regular atom gets, brings eight electrons to the party. Ideally, I would have 32 valence electrons for everybody to have an octet. I have 26. So six need to be shared in order for everyone to have an octet. How many bonds is that? Well, two electrons per bond. I have three bonds. So already I know uh, that phosphorus is not going to have a double bond here with anything. But I have to have an octet, so it has to have a pair of electrons up here. Because that's two, four, six electrons. It needs eight. And so you put the other two as an unshared pair. Okay. Bromine has to have eight. And of course, remember the, the dot pattern of bromine? The dot pattern of bromine is seven valence electrons, which is six paired, and then the one here for bonding. Okay, so now I've satisfied my octet rule for everything. I have accounted for my one phosphorus and three bromines. Let's check the electrons. Do I have 26 valence electrons? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. I do. All right. I've done my three checks. That's the shape. Let's see here. Okay, let's do this one. So, excuse me. CH2O. That's not very dark. I don't know where my black pen went. I'll go with blue. All right, what's the number of valence electrons? Dust. I have carbon, which is four. I have two hydrogens, which is one. And I have oxygen which is six. So this is two, so that's 12 electrons. What's my ideal? Well, I have two regular atoms. They each are gonna have eight valence electrons, ideally. And then hydrogen 
only has two in a filled shell. So this is 16 and this is four, so I have 20 valence electrons, ideally. So how many need to be shared? 20 minus 12 is eight. I have to share eight valence electrons for everyone to have an octet. How many bonds is that? I divide it by two and I get four bonds. So I know my molecule has four bonds. Okay, what's my centermost atom? It's the least electronegative, it's gonna be the carbon. So put the hydrogen around it and the oxygen. They're gonna surround the carbon. Make your bonds. I have four bonds though, and I only have three. So the other one has to go there because you're not giving hydrogen double bonds ever. Okay, octet rule. Well, my carbon has eight electrons, two, four, six, eight. My oxygen only has four. So you put in the valence electrons to complete the octet. And now it has eight, two, four, six, eight. All right, well, octet rule satisfied. I have accounted for all of my atoms. Let's check, do I have 12 valence electrons? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. There we go. There's my molecule. Okay, let's work another one. Sorry. All right. Um, oh yeah, I like this one. This is a good one. CH3N, it's on your lab exercise, but when you go to work it, work it on your own. Don't come back to this until you've, you think you've got it right. Valence electrons, carbon has four. Hydrogen has one, nitrogen has five. So seven, I have 12, right? 12 valence electrons. Okay, what's my ideal? I have two regular atoms. Each regular atom has, brings its full set of eight to the party. And then I have three hydrogens, which only brings two. That's considered a full set to the party. So this is 16 and this is six. So ideally, I would have 22 valence electrons for everyone to have a full set if they carried their own. But I don't have 22, I only have 12. So I need to share 10 in order for everyone to have an octet. How many bonds is that? It's five bonds. So carbon is my least electronegative atom. So it's in the middle, but my nitrogen. The first thing to think about is, okay, we're gonna do this. I have five bonds, so I can do this. But Houston, we have a problem. Carbon cannot have five bonds on the carbon atom. It can only have four. You cannot have one, two, three, four, five bonds on a carbon. That's two, four, six, eight. That's 10 electrons. That breaks the octet rule. So we can't do that. Well, what can we do? If I remove one of these bonds, well, okay, so what if I do that and I put the valence electrons around the nitrogen, right? Everybody's got an octet now. Everything's accounted for. Let's count the valence electrons. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. But I only have 12. Therefore, that's not correct. 
Okay. Now what? Well, what about if we move one of these hydrogens? Hydrogens not always only on carbon. So you have to be a little creative and rearranging sometimes. Now I can put my double bond to carbon. Carbon has four bonds, two, four, six, eight, satisfies the octet rule. Nitrogen has six, but I can put a valence electron pair there. So now nitrogen has two, four, six, eight. So I've accounted for my carbon, my three hydrogens and my nitrogen. Now let's check valence electrons. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, there you go. So make sure you go through all of the checks because if you don't, there's a very good, especially on something like this, that's probably the most common mistake is in molecules not satisfying the octet rule, either having too few bonds or too many. So check your octet rule first. Check that you've accounted for everything, all of your atoms, and then check your number of valence electrons. All right, let's see. All right, I'm gonna do this one. C2H6O, okay. How many valence electrons do I have? Well, carbon is four. Hydrogen, I have six, and that's one each, six oxygen. So this is eight, six, that's 14, that's 20. Okay, what's my ideal? If they each came to the party bringing their own electrons, I have three, two, two carbons, one oxygen. I have three atoms, regular atoms, and each has eight valence electrons to be a full set, a full to be closed, you know, filled, there we go. I have six hydrogens, but that only has two valence electrons to be filled. So eight times three is 24, six times two is 12. So 36 valence electrons, if I had 36 and they all brought their own, everyone would have a filled shell but I don't have 36, I have 20. So how many have to be shared? Well, we have 16 that have to be shared. How many bonds is that? There are two electrons in each bond. So there are eight bonds. Okay. So what's our shape? I have two carbons. I'm gonna put them in the middle. I don't know where that oxygen goes. So for now, I'm just gonna put it here. Your end carbon is 90% of the time going to have the hydrogens around it like that. Sometimes you will have a double bond here and two hydrogens. So I have eight bonds, one, two, three, four, five. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I only have seven bonds. So this already has an octet. This has an octet. So my oxygen, I'm going to give it a double bond. That's why I like to know how many bonds I have initially. So now this has an octet. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have eight bonds. This is an octet. This is an octet. That is now an octet. All right. I've accounted for all of my molecules. Double check that. No, I haven't either. One, two, three, four, five, and I have six. Look at that. Caught my own mistake. That's why you double check. Let's go back to that. So I have one, two, three, four, five hydrogens. So the other one can only go there. There's no other place for it. And yes, oxygen often has hydrogen coming off of it. So double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have eight bonds. I have two carbons. I have six hydrogens and one oxygen. That has an octet. That has an octet. 
that now has an octet. That's a very common bonding pattern for, high, for oxygen. Okay, now let's check valence electrons. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. There we go. Now, there's something called an isomer, which you're going to learn in the next lecture. I had said, I don't know where to put that oxygen. What if I would put it in the middle of the carbons? Okay, I'm going to erase this. Boy, I wish I had a bigger one. Don't knock the pens off. So what if we started with that? Let's put our hydrogens on our carbons. Generally, again, if you have a carbon at the end, it's going to have two or three hydrogens, depending on how many you have to distribute. All right. I have two carbons. I have six hydrogens. I have one oxygen. I've accounted for everything. This has eight electrons, four bonds. This has eight. This now has eight. Okay, it's looking good. Let's count balance electrons. Should be 20. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Well, gosh, I have two structures that can satisfy the same set. And they're both correct. They are called isomers. And I'm going to talk about isomers in the next lecture, or one of the next ones. It's actually lecture nine. I'll include it with formal structures and polarity. But, or I'll actually, I'll do it on its own lecture. Um, these are called isomers. They have identical molecular content, but they're laid out differently. So I'll get back into that more, but this is your first introduction to isomers. Because they're both correct, aren't they? They both satisfied what we need. Okay. Let me do one more. And you can have, often have a number of isomers for a molecular formula. What about, okay, there are two different ways to write this and I want to point something out to you. I can write C3H6O2. That's a very general formula. Sorry, not O2, just O. That is not specifying any particular structure. It's simply saying there are three carbons, six hydrogens, and one oxygen. But if you see this broken down into a specific structure, then that means it's talking about a specific molecule. This is the same number of carbons, hydrogens, oxygens, but this is broken up to show you that there is a specific structure. So if you see something written like this, you draw it like that. And anything else is an isomer of that. So you notice how the carbons are separated? That's your key. Your carbons are often your, they're the, the links in the chain. So it's telling you this carbon is attached to three hydrogens. This carbon has an oxygen on it and this carbon has three hydrogens. So that's how you draw it. So we're gonna go through the steps again, but I'm going to, well, I'll just move this. Okay, so how many valence electrons? I'm going to use this just because it's easier for the math. But remember, they're identical in the number of atoms in each kind. This is a specific structure. So I have three carbons and, I, and that's four each. I have six hydrogens and that's one each. And I have an oxygen, which is six. So that's 12, six, 18, 24. What's my ideal? Okay, I have four, three carbons and one oxygen. I have four regular atoms that would have eight electrons each. So that's 32. I have six hydrogen atoms that would have two electrons 
each, so that's 12. So 44 ideal valence electrons. How many do I actually have? I actually have 24. So that means I have 20. Right. Oh, right, okay. 20 shared electrons. How many bonds is that? 10 bonds. So I have 10 bonds. It does not matter how they're laid out. Like I said, this is a specific structure, but no matter how I lay that out, no matter what isomer I use, it's going to have 10 bonds. All right. So we're going to do this one because that's the way it was written specifically like that. So it says that I have a carbon with three hydrogens. It says that I have a carbon with an oxygen coming off of it. Yes, this oxygen could be in between the carbons as well. But what we're seeing is that this oxygen is next to that carbon. Okay, this carbon, first of all, do I have all of my atoms? I have three carbons. I have six hydrogens and one oxygen. Yes. This is this structure. Octet rule, this is satisfied, this is satisfied, this is not. This only has six, so you put a double bond. That carbon is now satisfies the octet rule. The oxygen, now it does. Okay, let's check valence electrons. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. And that's how many I had. How many bonds do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bonds. So that is this. However, there are other ways you could draw this, but this is this structure. That's the important message here. So if you see this, it could be written any number of ways. If you see this, that's a specific structure. So let's do an isomer. Now that also, what happens if I try to put the carbon? Can I do this? No, I can't because I don't have enough hydrogens. All right, so I can't do this because I don't have enough hydrogens. However, I can't do this this way, putting the oxygen between the two because I don't have enough hydrogens. But if I want to do that, I can because then I'm not specifying that that carbon has three hydrogens. I'm just saying I have three carbons, I have six hydrogens, and I have one oxygen. So if I put one of my hydrogens there, move this around just because it's prettier, and then I put a double bond here, because remember, I had one double bond in my previous isomer. All of my isomers will have one double bond. They're all, that's the only way to have the 10 bonds. One of them has one double bond. So I'm going to put it right here. This is satisfied for the octet rule. This is, this is now, and this is. Count balance electrons, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Okay. That's satisfied. This particular formula here has a total of five isomers. There are five different ways you can put that together. So play around. What defines an isomer is that the, what, what is in order? What's linked to what changes? All right, I'll go into that a little bit on a very short video next time. So that's all I'm going to work out here. And that's the end of Lewis structure. So that's the end of lecture should really put this somewhere handy. Lecture seven.